Hi everyone and welcome to the 10th lecture of the tree series. In this lecture I'll be discussing the problem subtree queries. So you are given a rooted tree consisting of n nodes. The nodes are numbered from 1 to n and node 1 is the root. Each node has a value. There are two types of queries. Firstly, change the value of a node s to x and calculate the sum of values in the subtree of node x. Now this, this is the sample tree given. These are the values and this is the tree structure and these are the queries. Now this tree, if you apply the second type of query on a node, let's say the third node, it will calculate all the sum of all the values in this particular subtree, which will be five plus two plus one, which is eight, right? And to apply the second type of, the first type of query, then on the fifth node we change the value from one to three it will become three and then if we apply the second type of query again on the third node the sum would be five five plus two plus three which would be ten now a brute force approach to calculate the sum would be to call a dfs upon the particular node to calculate the sum of its of all the values in the subtree now each dfs costs around they go of n time complexities and multiplied by the number of queries it would become they go of n into q which is too slow and won't work so we need a more efficient solution to calculate the sum and for that we will be using euler tool we will also be using segment trees in this problem so that is a prerequisite now let's begin this is the tree. In Euler tool, firstly I'll be running a DFS from the first node, and I'll also be having a timer value which I'll increment every time I enter a new node, and I'll be storing the starting and ending times for all, each of these nodes. So firstly, the first node, the timer is set to one. When it comes to the second node, the timer increments. The starting time of two is two right next it comes to it comes to the fourth node timer becomes three and when leaving the fourth node i also set the ending time of fourth which is also three next in the fifth node the timer increments and becomes four and while leaving it's also four next the ending time of two would also be four now coming to the third node the starting time would be 5 right next to the 6th node increment and become 6 to the in the 8th node the starting time would be 7 now the ending time would also be 7 in the 9th node the starting time would be 8 the 10th node the starting time would be 9 and then ending time would also be 9 now in the 11th node it would be 10 and 10 again and the ending time for the 9th node would also be 10 and this would be 10 and the starting time for the 7th node would be 11 and the end ending time would also be 11 this would be 11 and this would be 11 now that I have the starting times and ending times for each of these nodes, let me first write them down in a table. Now I've written the in and out times for all the nodes in the tree in a table. Now I'll make another table wherein for each timer value, I'll be writing the number of the node which has the starting time as that timer value. Right. Now I have two tables. Firstly, this table stores the value for each node. The value of each node the, for the first node would be 3 and so on. Now, this table shows at what time which node is having the starting time, right? So, 1 the value of that particular node. So, the starting time for 1 at 1 is for the node 1, and the value of 1 is 3. So, firstly, I'll write 3 here. Next, the 
starting time 2 is for the node 2 and the value of 2 is 1 so I write 1 here and so on let's say for the starting time 6 or let's say the starting time 11 the node is 7 and the value of 7 is 3 for 11 I'll write 3 and so on now once I have arranged all the node values according to the starting times what I can do is let's say I have a query of the second type which is Let's say I want to find the sum of the values of the nodes of the subtree rooted at the third node, right? Now for the third node, I know that the starting time is 5 and the ending time is 11. Now in this table, the value at the starting time 5 is 2 and at the starting time 11 is 3. Now the sum of all these values would be my solution which is the sum of all the nodes in the subtree rooted at 3 now let's see why so for the starting time 5 which is at the third node which is what our query was all the nodes that are that have the starting time greater than 5 and lesser than equal to 11 or greater than equal to 5 and less than equal to 11 will be part of this subtree right and all the nodes in the rest of the tree would have the starting time either lesser than 5 or greater than 11 thus all the values in this particular segment will belong to the subtree of 3 and the solution to the query would be the sum of this particular segment in this array right now this problem becomes a standard segmentary point updates and range query problem where the value at a particular position may change when I change the value of a particular node right and then the second type of query is range sum queries the time complexity for the Euler tool would be the same as in DFS which is big O of n and for the segmentary the building operation would take big O of n and both the queries would take big O of log n and the total time complexity would be big O of q into log n right now let us look at the code of this you can find the link to the code for this problem and all the problems discussed in this series in the description and you can access it from there now firstly I have an array for the segmentary and an array for the values array of vectors for the tree and I have a timer and the starting array that stores the starting value for each node and the ending array right? now firstly in the main function we will be taking the values and then the tree and I'll running a, I'll be running a DFS at the first node with, with the parent as 0 now this DFS will firstly set the timer for that particular node as the given timer value the initial timer value and then it will increment it and then for all the children it will run a DFS and at the end of it it will set the ending time now after the DFS 